Okay, hi, can you tell us your name? My name is Paul Bowman, and I have a very small organic farm in Mancos, Colorado. We uh, raise about 22 different varieties of root crops and vegetables. Um, we've been selling commercially for about seven years, and uh, we have two shoulder season CSAs, and we also have uh, wholesale accounts. What does that mean, shoulder season CSAs? Our spring green CSA starts in April and goes to June, mm -hmm. and our fall CSA starts in September and goes to December. And can you explain what a CSA is to people who don't know? Community Supported Agriculture. Um, another acronym would be Subscription Farming. Okay. You, you pay for X amount of vegetables for X amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, shares okay. is another acronym. Great, and it's all organic? Yes, it is. And now, how do you keep the pests away? Uh, we use row covers, uh, floating row covers. It's a, a product called Agribond. Uh, there, there aren't a whole lot of organic herbicides or pesticides. Uh, we use Murphy's oil to for uh, aphids. Um, what do you do with the Murphy's oil? You dilute it in uh, water and spray it on the aphids and it uh, kills them. And it goes right on the plant? Mm -hmm. And But it doesn't affect the flavor or the no. makeup of the plant? Uh, it washes off. It washes off. Okay, so then you water it afterwards? Water it, and then when you pick it, you'll, of course, wash the vegetables. Oh, okay. And what is Murphy's oil made out of? It's a good question. I don't know what the ingredients are, but it's a, it's a soap. Okay. Uh, but it's uh, oil. But, uh, yeah. Oily kind of soap. I don't oh, okay. know what the ingredients are. Okay, but it's a type of soap. Yeah. And it is... Uh, Okay, okay to use it in organic situations. Great, okay. And how long have you been farming? Uh, commercially, seven years. Okay. And wh what would you say to the farmers that think that they have to farm with chemicals? Um, that's a sticky wicket. Um, farming two acres is very, very different than far farming 8,000 acres. Uh, the challenges are vastly different. Um, there are precedents for large-scale organic farming. Uh, it, is a it takes a different. It's a different challenge. Uh, it's doable, but it's not rocket science to figure out why it works on two acres and why it can't, doesn't work so well on eight thousand. So um, it's not fair to. Say the guy who's farming 8,000 acres is doing bad things. Right. Um, any more than it's bad for me to say uh, I'm the cutting edge. It's self serving in both extremes. Right. Well, do you think we need farming it with 8,000 acres? Yes. Yeah? Absolutely. Okay. It's so, not possible to feed even the town of Mancos on two acres. Oh, no, sure. No, sure. But, I mean, or could, could we have February. more smaller farms? Yes. Yes. We could have more smaller farms. <laughs> that won't satisfy the need for... It won't satisfy the same volume need right. for the consumption that is necessary to feed the population. So do you see a solution to, to switching over from chemical farming to organic, or do you think it's really necessary? It's a, it's a good concept. I think it's doable, but once again, the, there is there it's just not fair to compare farming two acres to eight thousand. Uh, it, it, it is possible, but it's it's not a mystery why somebody farming eight thousand acres would scoff at. Uh, not using pesticides and herbicides to control weeds and bugs. Right. Uh, it's doable, but it takes a whole bunch of a, a different mindset to uh, go there and do that. Yeah, it does take a different mindset. It takes a different mindset to be organic, but 
it, it just it doesn't uh, transcend the the, uh, the the acreage. Uh, 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 managing two acres organically is just really. Um, it's just no comparison to being responsible for eight thousand acres of any product, whether it's wheat, potatoes, corn. Uh, it's just, it's just a lot of acreage to take care of. Yeah. Well, I, I hear that you have respect for for your job and for their job and what they're and taking on. Absolutely. They, uh, they're, they're, the 8,000 acre farmer is working as hard as I do. Uh, he has a lot of the same challenges. Um, uh, a lot of the same uh, successes and failures. Uh, there's, there's a lot of comparisons. Um, so I, I have empathy for the guy who is farming that much. I have chosen to do the opposite extreme, but I'm not farming 8,000 acres, I'm yeah. farming two. What do you think about genetically modified crops? That's a very good question. Um, it's a, it's not a good thing. Um, if you look in a seed catalog and you read the descriptions of seeds, there is no such thing as a original seed. So what, say, Monsanto is doing is further uh, manipulating uh, the genetic makeup of a seed. But any seed that you can think of has been modified, possibly non-genetically, but it's still not an original seed. Uh, the GMOs also have other weird attributes that aren't that good, and it's the, the latest twist in the ever-evolving face of farming. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 50 years ago, MSG was not considered a bad thing, and now all of a sudden it is. Uh, 50 years ago, Roundup wasn't a bad thing. Uh, so, uh, this crisis will be replaced by another one, and 100 years from now, um, we'll look back on the, the GMO crisis and say that's nothing to, compared to what the challenges are today. We're still trying to feed lots and lots of people with very little. And the GMO is an effort by somebody to facilitate feeding more people with less. And it's not 100% bad. But it's not 100% good either, and neither there there is no there is no absolute goodness anywhere. Um, if in the farming profession you you participate in the, and some aspect of your business is not going to be that pleasant. Yeah. So. Uh, Wow. Being organic is this generation's um, cool, groovy thing. This this phase will probably fade, as every other um, every other generation has also had its uh, place to be. Um, at the turn of the century. Um, it was really good, a, a good practice to plow up uh, millions of acres in Oklahoma because you could make lots of money. And then suddenly, 40 years after that, um, that vanished and we got the dust bowl. So it, it's constantly evolving and what what is what 
passes is really good and wonderful today isn't going to be good and wonderful 50 hundred years from now. So you, you, get, you, get, you need to keep past mistakes in perspective of future mistakes. And if you're farming today, um, good luck. It's uh, it's an okay profession to be in, but it. There are definitely easier ways to make money. Yeah, very challenging. Extremely challenging. Yeah. Well, thank you for what you do as a farmer. Thank you. And especially as an organic farmer, I have to say I'm biased. <laughs> and I appreciate your perspective. You're very welcome. And um, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Great. Thank you. Great.